Okay, now let's conduct this test in SPSS, which is what you would typically do in this kind of situation. So you're going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, and a one sample t-test. Uh, if you do have multiple variables here, just make sure you select the one that you've been using throughout the lab. Uh, slide that over to the test variables. And very, very important, make sure that you put your null hypothesis mean in here. So you might need to go back to step six to see what that was. For me, that was 90, 90 minutes. Uh, then I'm going to click OK. Uh, you should get two pieces of output here. Uh, make sure that you copy and paste both of those into your lab report. So I'm going to put that here. Oop. Looks like I'm going to need to get them as images again. Um, in Word, you should be able to get those um, just by clicking, cutting, and pasting. Okay, so I've now cut it and pasted those two tables into my lab report. And I'm going to compare these results to my hand calculation. So here's the moment of truth. Um, we're looking at that T statistic right there and hoping dearly that it's the same as this value right here. If it's not, uh, fret not, it, it means probably one of them was off. Um, maybe make sure that you put your null hypothesis mean in that SPSS output. Uh, double check your calculations here. If you really can't figure it out, um, send me all your information and I'd be glad to take a look at it and give you a hint in the right direction. Uh, but in, in my case here, uh, they do match up. Uh, my get this unbolded here, my SPSS output uh, matched the T statistic that I calculated by hand. Um, and then the thing that you didn't do by hand is your p-value. Uh, you could have gotten an estimate from the charts, uh, but here we, we get the exact, so where it says sig two-tailed, this is your p-value. Um, it's never exactly zero. So if you see this triple zeros, um, uh, I'm going to say my test was statistically significant, uh, p less than 0 0.001. So if yours says 0 0.000 here, just say it's something less than 0 0.001. Um, and also do remember that if you did a one-tailed test like I did, um, you would want to divide this number by two. But in my case, zero divided by two is still zero here. Um, it's so small that even when rounded, it's not 0 0.001. So that's why we describe it like this. If you have the actual number here, um, go ahead and just put p equals that number. Unless, if you did a one-tailed test and you have a, a number here, divide this number by two because this this is how much it would be for a two-tailed uh, test. But, but for your one-tail, assuming you rejected uh, the null hypothesis, you should divide this this number by two, uh, and then you would just put p equals that number. Okay, um, next we want to find your confidence interval, and you can grab that right here. Uh, interval means it's a range of numbers, so it's got some lower bound and some upper bound, and, and the actual interval is all the numbers in between there. So we'll write that. And then let's interpret this in plain English. So worst case scenario, um, this is comparing the uh, average amount of sleep I'm getting. Uh, probably, again, we're estimating what that true average is, that parameter, and comparing that with the recommended amount. So these negative uh, mean that I'm below that null hypothesis mean. In, in other words, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm somewhere between seven and 18 minutes less than that uh, recommended 
90 minutes of, of deep sleep per night. Um, so you may remember the confidence interval right here was 71 to 82. So where am I getting uh, 7 to, um, what did I say? 7 to 18 minutes less. Well, think about this. So it, this is also true that I'm, I'm probably getting somewhere between 71 and, and 82 minutes of deep sleep per night. Uh, but if you compare these two numbers to 90 minutes, the 90 recommended minutes, uh, this here would put me around 7, the best case scenario, if I, if I really am getting up to 82, 83 minutes of deep sleep per night, that's still 7 minutes less than the minimum recommended. And this worst case scenario here, I'd be down as low as 18 minutes uh, below that recommended 90. So this is just giving me a confidence interval on my average number per sleep. And this is a confidence interval on how much less than the recommended minimum. So they're, they're match up really nicely, uh, but two different perspectives. Uh, so how does this connect with your null hypothesis test here? Well, basically, if, if zero is not in between these two numbers, then you're going to be rejecting your null hypothesis mean. In other words, um, I, I'm not exactly sure how much deep sleep I'm getting. I mean, I just had a sample of 48 nights. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere between 7 minutes below and 18 minutes below the recommended amount, which means even best case scenario, I'm below the recommended amount, which is why I, I rejected the null right here. On the other hand, if 0 was in between these two numbers, then I might not be exactly sure. I, I might not have enough evidence, really, to say... Um, that there is a difference. Maybe maybe I have some suggestion in one direction or the other, but if zero is in there, that means some of the numbers are negative, some of the numbers are positive. So some of my estimate might be that I'm my uh, population mean is, is below that null hypothesis mean, and uh, some of my estimate might suggest it's above. In that case, it'd be... Um, It'd be inconclusive, and I would have failed to reject here. So if, if zero is between these two, uh, you should have failed to reject here. If it's not between these two, um, then you you should have rejected, unless you were in the wrong direction, I suppose. So if if these numbers had both been above zero, um, I I still would have uh, rejected. Did, no, I actually, sorry, I, w I would have failed to reject my null hypothesis here because I could only reject my null in the lower direction. That that goes way back to um, this left-tailed question idea that I, I can only possibly reject the null hypothesis uh, by having a very low sample mean. If I had been way above the null hypothesis mean um, in, in this particular case, I would have failed to reject. Okay, uh, step nine is practical significance, and this is somewhat dependent on your knowledge of whatever this context is. Um, it, it answers the question, does it really matter? So the null hypothesis test, um, is there a difference? Are, are we pretty sure that there's something going on, that there's some difference here? Um, from the null hypothesis mean. But this practical significance idea answers the question, does it even matter in real life? And in my case, I think it does, because uh, to me, getting deep sleep is important. I've read some studies, again, on, on how uh, it does affect, over time, it does affect the, the brain chemistry, the physical health, the mental health. Um, so even if I'm, I'm only getting seven minutes less than the recommended minimum, um, over, over a week, that's 49 minutes. Over a month, that's three and a half hours. Over a year, you know, it, it's building, building, and I would imagine that it would have some kind of compounding effect. Uh, and, and that's best case scenario. So, you know, the, the more I am to that, almost 20 minutes under 
per night, uh, the worse that outcome looks. So that's an unfortunate thing. The, the positive thing is that um, some of this data is a little older, and because I did see that there were some practically significant results, I've been testing out some various things, using some regression, and I've seen a big improvement in my amount of deep sleep. Uh, but the reason I took action was because I had conducted some tests and, and found that the results were practically significant uh, in, a, in a negative direction. And finally, limitations. Um, here you might go up to your assumptions. Uh, for example, if you did choose to use an ordinal level um, variable and, and assume that it was quantitative, that would be a, a major limitation. Uh, in my case, my sample wasn't random, and, and it's very likely that your sample will not be random too, so that's probably going to be a big limitation for you. Uh, in my case, also, the uh, Fitbit itself, I think, does maybe an okay job. I've read a couple studies where they hooked people up to wires on their uh, head, and then they also measured with the Fitbit, and the two matched up fairly well, um, but I've also had some questionable things like uh, in the middle of the night I wake up, watch some uh, YouTube videos or something, uh, and I look later, my Fitbit recorded that entire time as sleep. So um, that would also be a, a pretty important variable here um, that, that I'm questioning the accuracy, and, and that would impact these results, of course.